Almost all satellites need to communicate with the ground somehow or another in order to fill their function. Otherwise, they're sitting up there in space and they're not really doing a whole lot. And with the exception of a very, very few specialty satellites that require no communication at all, then you need to have some method of communication there. So we're going to talk about that. Um, I'm assuming that you've seen my previous lecture on the communication RF communication payloads. Um, and so I'm going to talk primarily about how some alternative things that you need to know for communication. But these two lectures really go hand in hand with each other. So you can have a communication system. It can be very simple or very complex. On the left is the Rincon 1 satellite that I had previously mentioned I worked with. You can see it has two different antennas. It has just a dipole antenna that is a UHF, so 400 megahertz signal, and it has also a, a ring band here that is also on the UHF spectrum, a circular antenna. Neither one of these has particularly high gain, but these low gain antennas, they work well because you don't have to have as tight of an attitude control system and you can make up for it on the ground. And these are also low earth, low earth orbiting satellites, so they're pretty close to the ground, even at the furthest away. On the right, you have the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which is much, much further away. And so it needs a dedicated antenna. You have a high gain antenna that you have to point straight at Earth in order to get the signal correctly. Um, so how can you determine how much of a gain that you actually need? There's something that's called a link budget, and it's kind of hard to, to uh, show, but... Uh, first, let me talk about the image on the left is the Viking or Voyager antenna, high gain antenna, just kind of a reflection to see what they look like, these, these big giant dish antennas. They have, they're basically telescopes for radio waves. The radio waves bounce in here, they bounce off of a secondary antenna and into the receiver. In this case, the receiver is actually here. So they, they, all of the signal comes along there. You have some supporting structures. They also put the sun sensor just to help make it a little bit better. But all of this is um, communication. You have a very similar design for the Deep Space Network, which is this is one of the satellites for there. So each of these two antennas will have a certain gain. Now, the gain might depend on the orientation somewhat, so you might lose a little bit if you're not exactly optimally pointed, but they try to design these such that they can actually maintain the pointing that they need to. There's also a gain lost in the distance between the two points. So the further you are away, the more the signal drops, and the signal tends to drop, well, it does drop, based off of the, it's called an R-squared law, the if you double the distance, you you have four times the power. If you, you know, take whatever factor you're multiplying by the distance and square it, and that's how much power you've lost by going that far. And so they'll measure the, the communication link in dBs. And so you can figure out how big of an antenna that you need in order to capture your particular signal, however far it might be. Um, a high gain antenna on the spacecraft can make up for not having as good of intent on the ground and vice versa. But for the really far out stuff, you have to have a high gain antenna on both systems. If you're just orbiting Earth, it might not matter as much, so you could probably do with a lower gain system. So where can you actually send signals? Well, this is the atmospheric opacity window. So anywhere that you see a signal below 100%, you could theoretically send a signal. Most of the radio waves are sent in this particular band. These are the, the radio waves on the lower end and the higher end, you come into the microwaves. Visible light also goes through the atmosphere pretty well. You can use laser beams, although we'll talk about it a little bit later, they have their own difficulties. And there's also um, some infrared bands that can transmit pretty well through the, the atmosphere. If you have a space-based system, then you don't even need to worry about this. You can just track things directly, although we have a very limited deep space network. So visible light has two main issues. One is it doesn't get transmitted through clouds very well. So if there are clouds, then you're going to have some troubles. Uh, the second issue is that it's a very, very high gain system. 
the lower you are on here, the smaller the waves, the higher the gain tends to be for those signals. A laser beam has a very, very tight focus with relatively small, with very small optics, actually. Whereas you don't have nearly as much gain even with a big giant dish. So you can do a lot more with less power and transmit a higher data wavelength the, the higher that you go um, as far as your power is concerned. So that can be very, very useful. So we'll, there's a number of different bands that are used in the radio waves, although laser communication is something that isn't done a whole lot, but it has been done for some proof of concept type things. The pointing accuracy is is very immense. Instead of pointing at Earth, you have to know where the receiver is on Earth in order to communicate. And it might not be that for any reasonable length of time we'll have a system that has a pure laser system, but it might be a, a good secondary link, and it has been used in some instances. Well, anyways, there's a number of different bands that are used in the RF signals. Uh, VHF is very rarely used. There's only a few bands that use that for satellites. Um, the Orbcom satellites, I think, operate in the UHF. This is pretty rare. They tend to be more in the higher things. Your cable TV tends to be in the KU, K, KA bands. And uh, generally, they're, they're moving up to these higher frequency bands as they have more data requirements. So you'll hear KA uh, bands. But, you know, you can look these up pretty easily, what they all mean. But... So the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter operates at a higher frequency than anything that has been sent to Mars before, and so that's part of how it's able to send more data. The further to the right, the better your data spectrum that you can send. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey. Let me know whatever questions you guys have about RF communication or satellites in general or whatever else you might have. Uh, take care, and until next time, keep on tracking. We will see you next time.